Hello YouTube. Welcome to another fun-filled and exciting episode of Easy Prepping. Today's topic is uh, a bomb shelter, or maybe more accurately described as a fallout shelter. Because I'm not talking about you digging a big pit in your backyard and pouring concrete like people were doing in the 50s, the Cold War. I'm talking about uh, protecting you from fallout, which you should have at least a minimum of 24 hours in a sealed area. And I think you'd probably go more like uh, 48 to 72 hours to be safe. I'm going to put a map up here that I found online that shows uh, likely nuclear strike areas if someone were to attack the United States. Unfortunately, it does not cover Hawaii and Alaska, which I'm sure would be included in nuclear strikes. And the map showing the fallout area, which would be downwind from the nuclear strike, is an estimate based on which way the wind normally blows. If it's in a different direction, that fallout pattern would be different. So you would need to take that into consideration. As I believe I've mentioned in a previous video, uh, when my wife and I built this house, we designed it, spent years designing it. And because we do live in a tornado area and we're at the top of a ridge, we decided to put a tornado shelter under the front porch. Well, here uh, about a little over a year ago, when the whole Russia-Ukraine thing started up, I decided to also make that my bomb shelter. Once again, I'm down there surrounded by concrete, which is the most secure room in the house for something like that. But you don't have to have that. It could be, even if you don't have a basement, try to find, well, pretty much the same thing you would in a tornado, a internal room. Fewer windows, the better. And on the subject of windows, uh, you should have, preferably cut in advance, some fairly thick plastic that is of course, a little bit larger than your windows on the inside, and some duct tape. This would allow you to better air seal the uh, area that you're trying to protect because that fallout would travel on the air. The first thing I'd recommend that you make sure you have in your uh, bomb shelter is items for just basic comfort. At least uh, a chair for everybody that uh, would be joining you there, and then probably some type of bedding. What I have in mind, well, there are several fairly comfortable office chairs, and also recently at a estate auction, I picked up some rather large comforters, which if you look at the design, the pattern on them, the coloring, they're probably from 70s, I'm guessing, but they were still new in the container, and they went into the tornado shelter to increase our comfort if we were to be trapped in there for several days. Also at the top of my list for uh, when I decided to make it a bomb shelter, I purchased a radiation detector. I will put a picture of the one here that I bought on Amazon. Uh, I didn't pick this up until back in December, but I've noticed when I look today that the price of this thing is now $129 on Amazon. And I was thinking, I didn't pay that much for it. I looked back at my orders and I paid $94 for it, which still was not cheap. But if you want to know if it's going to be safe to uh, be able to come out, you should have at least some type of radiation detector. Also, mine is stored inside my Faraday cage, which uh, I will also put a picture of up here. Uh, you can build one yourself. All you need is some type of metal container. I based mine on how much I want to be able to put in it. But there are many videos out there. I think there's one, a, a YouTuber calls himself, uh, I think it's Dr. Faraday, does some very good videos on making a Faraday cage. And since the radiation detector is electronic, and we're talking about surviving nuclear war, uh, it should be inside your Faraday cage. 
Yes, you're looking to spend a minimum of 24 hours in this space, the bomb shelter. You could go that long without food or water, and you could even go the 48 to 72 hours that I'd recommend, but it wouldn't be very pleasant, at, without, at least without some water. A minimum of one gallon per person per day. Uh, and mine, I also put uh, a case of Gatorade, so we would have liquid with more substance to it. Next, I'm going to go over some food items that uh, I brought a few of them up from my tornado slash bomb shelter that uh, I'd like to recommend to you, especially if you're not storing your food in a cool, dry space. The first one would be these that you can buy on Amazon. I'll put a picture of them up here. Uh, these are approved by the Coast Guard. I believe they use them in lifeboats. They're good for five years under any weather conditions. So if you store them in a cool, dry place, I'm betting they would be edible longer than that. Each one, each of these little blocks, is 3,600 calories. If you look at a person needing 1,500 calories a day, if they're not real active, 1,500 is plenty, that's two days of food. That if your bomb shelter is just a bedroom, put that in the back of a sock drawer. Next we have something that I keep in my bomb shelter is just summer sausage. Pick these up at your grocery. We have peanut butter, which also has a pretty long shelf life. Then there's these packets of dry food that I bought. This one is a vegetable soup mix. All you need is water and some heat. It's uh, one, I have two cups of water for every one cup of this stuff. Then you've got vegetable soup. So you can have some variety while you're trapped in there. Next, for those of us that can't do without our coffee, instant coffee, plus water and a way to heat it. Next, I want to cover fire, our way to create it. Uh, being you're trapped inside your bomb shelter, you want to be extremely careful with your fire. You don't want to burn yourself out of your shelter. But as far as ways of starting a fire, several things that I have in uh, my tornado shelter are a, uh, well, a bunch of big lighters. Pick them up on Amazon. Uh, my wife and I take some medical supplements daily, and some of these larger containers are airtight, and they're very good at storing things like big lighters. I have another one down there that has uh, matches in it. Also, the Strike Anywhere type matches. All I do is I take these, load them up with uh, lighter or matches, right fire on the side of it and put it on the shelf. The other type that I have down there is, uh, I didn't dig it out, but I have the kit that I bought from Amazon. I'll put the picture up here. Uh, back from my Navy days, I smoked back then, and I think just about every serviceman, not just sailors, carried a Zippo lighter in their pocket. And they were dependable, as long as you had extra flints and fuel, you were good for years. So I'll put a picture up here of this kit that you can get at Amazon. I went ahead and ordered an extra one today, but uh, just get one of those, put it in your storage, stick it in the bottom of that sock drawer or wherever you plan on having your bomb shelter, and you've got a way to make fire. And now we have a way of using that fire to cook your food, heat your water for your coffee, whatever. I have down in the basement a box of tea light candles that are good for eight hours each. 
So if you pick up a hundred of these, that's eight, well, even if they only go five hours, that's what comes to 500 hours of light from a candle, also potentially using for cooking. I also have in the basement uh, containers like these. You've seen, uh, you've ever been to an event that was catered and they have a, a fire going under their food bins to keep things hot? That's these. You can also buy these on Amazon. And then there's this type of kit you can get that uh, will hold your pot above the flame. And this comes with uh, a few little tabs that uh, are meant to burn underneath it. I think those tea light candles would accomplish the same thing. Then another uh, prepper I know that I watch recommended this UCO candelier candle ladder. There are three of these nine hour candles in here and the way he used it, he also used it to heat his bunker. It, uh, like he told, he said in his video, it, it didn't heat it to like 80 degrees, but it would, it kept it livable. And I believe you could also cook on top of this. As far as cooking and being able to eat inside your bomb shelter, I recommend getting a stock of paper plates, paper bowls, and plastic utensils. I have a rather large stockpile of these in our uh, tornado shelter. <laughs> Some of them go back to the days when we used to uh, tailgate at college football games. We had a big stock of them then and I just put them in the basement. As far as staying informed while you trapped yourself inside your little room, uh, you would need some type of being able to receive communications. And I put a picture up here from uh, Amazon again. I have several of these in my Faraday cage in the basement, but these are hand crank radios. Uh, they come, some come with different features. Some have solar chargers, but if you want that, fine, but you're not going to be using that inside your bomb shelter. But you can charge these up to use them with a hand crank on the side. And then a lot of them also have the ability to charge your cell phones. If cell phones are still operating, it'd be nice to have it charged. It is one thing that I forgot to list here before I started my video. It occurred to me a minute ago that uh, you should have some form of keeping yourself and those with you entertained. Uh, absolute minimum would be just a deck of cards. You, you can play, if you're alone, play solitaire. If there's a bunch of you, play poker or spades or whatever other game you prefer. But having uh, even board games, uh, jigsaw puzzles, something to keep your mind occupied. You don't go stir crazy. Because uh, even just 24 hours in there could seem like a really long time if you don't have something to keep your mind occupied. And next, you're going to have uh, a pretty tough time telling if you have that winning hand in the poker game without some form of light. Uh, as far as flashlights go, I prefer just a smaller. Also, does both ways. Puts out a whole lot of light. Batteries last a long time. and has a magnet on the back. Being that I have some metal shelving in my uh, tornado slash bomb shelter. I take one of these, I stick it up there on that uh, shelf and I've got light throughout pretty much the whole room. And extra batteries for those too, by the way. And once again, back to candles, not just the tea light candles, but I also have uh, the long tapered candles. I have some of the bigger, uh, the ones you could get these pretty cheap at Dollar Tree. Uh, they might have a picture of a religious emblem on the side of them, but those are encased in glass, which makes them safer and they'll last a really long time. So get you some of those picked up and get them stored in your bomb shelter. An absolute must in your bomb shelter is going to be a pretty good first aid kit. And I brought mine up, the one that hangs on a uh, 
screw in the wall down there and it just stays there in the tornado shelter all the time. I also went ahead and carried up because I need to put it back on the tractor. It's, I brought it in to uh, go through it, make sure everything still looked in good shape because it rides around on the tractor with me. And in case of a uh, chainsaw accident, it, I keep a tourniquet in this one. If you're looking for just something inexpensive to have basic bandages, a few ointments, band-aids, you can look at uh, Walmart or Amazon and they there is a plethora of options there of more inexpensive, just basic first aid kits. If you want something more comprehensive, professional, there's a website called doomandbloom.net. This is run by uh, Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy, a couple of uh, preppers. I showed you one of their, well, two of their books when I was showing you my uh, prepper library on medical. And uh, <laughs> I've ordered some stuff from them. And, uh, my book is autographed by them. But they are not cheap. They are a little higher, that, quite a bit higher than the Walmart or Amazon. But you're getting much higher, I think, quality and content, better content, by going through them. And then we have a, a short list of just things to keep in your uh, bomb shelter that could come in handy. I already mentioned the plastic with the duct tape. Duct tape would be a uh, absolute must. Get you at least one roll and put it in there. Next would be mask. You should get good N95 mask. Not the cheaper cloth things that people make on their own or even those paper things that they put out at uh, doctor's office for you to wear. But get some good that are N95 quality, preferably even made by 3M. Next, uh, garbage bags would be a very handy thing to have. Uh, plastic tie wraps, I call them zip ties. And for necessity purposes, I'd recommend getting one of the, uh, it's a porta potty in a five gallon bucket. I'll put it up here on Amazon. Uh, I had one back before we built the house here out on the property for several years, and I would come up to cut firewood or work around the property, and I kept one of these in my barn. They're very good at being able to go when you have to and sealing it up safely. The one here in this picture from Amazon comes with just three of the bags. I'd recommend getting a few more. And perhaps one other item, especially if you plan on putting canned food in your bomb shelter, have a manual can opener. <laughs> that, that canned food may not do you much good. Another thing that I would recommend having in your bomb shelter is you don't know what the outside conditions could be as far as other people getting uh, violent, searching for sustenance. So I would recommend getting you some brass with uh, a little lead mixed in. And then to go with these, you have to have the uh, delivery system, I will call it. I'm avoiding some keywords there to stay on the good side of the YouTube examiners. But recommend some brass and lead. In closing, I'd like to ask that if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Click that little thumbs up like button for me. And as always, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Thank you for watching.